We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game nights questions. You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. Uh, social media works too. We're everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Now, the best way is for questions to come through the website. That way they don't get lost. I'm not going to say no to a question asked anywhere on social media or in person. Tonight, we have a question from Willie Waldman, who writes, My girlfriend and I are into gaming. I would like to know some games that you think are the most fun for two players. Any category, any size, any type. We play at home. We're new to this. So any help would be appreciated. Thank you. All right, so Willie and his girlfriend are just getting into gaming. So first off, longtime fans of the show know we've covered two-player games a number of times. And yes, this is another two-player game topic. I get it. Of all the questions we get at Tabletop Bellhop, the most popular topic by far is two-player games of some sort. That or how'd you get, what game got you into the hobby? Everyone asked that one too. But otherwise, it's a two-player this, two-player that. They always want to know. And I got to say, lately, it's spiked even more. And I have a feeling that's probably due to the global pandemic and way more people playing with smaller game groups because they're stuck with playing just the people in their immediate family. Not necessarily stuck. Some people like their family. Well, true enough. <laughs> but since we have talked about this before, what we'll do is drop links to all of our previous two-player episodes mm -hmm. and content in the show notes so that when you have time, you can dive through all of it. We've got things like best two-player games for date nights, best two-player cooperative games, quick and easy to learn two-player games, and more. Now, since we have talked about two-player games a number of times, what I like to do every time this topic comes up is try to find a unique twist to the topic, so a new way to look at things. And tonight's twist comes right from the question we received from Willie, because Willie notes that he and his girlfriend are brand new to gaming and that they're willing to take out any and all types of two-player games. So that gives us a broad range. So what I want to talk about then is some of the newest two-player games to be released. Games that are new for a couple of new players, right? All the new hotness tonight. Now, what this should mean for Willie is that any of the games mentioned should be able to find and be in stock. And I actually confirmed every game on the list tonight you can currently go buy on Amazon.com as well as other online game stores like, say, GameNerds.com. Unlike many of our game recommendations, this list won't be filled with classic games or out-of-print gems that are now almost impossible to find. For this episode, at least, we are all about the new hotness. Or at least relatively new hotness. Part of the problem is with 2020, there haven't been a lot of new games released. For one second, there's no con season for us to have tried a bunch of new games. So what I decided to do is kind of broaden it just a little bit because I, I don't I haven't played enough two-player games that were released in 2020 is to go three years. I figure three years is still pretty dang new to me. So we're looking at games that were released from 2017 onward. So actually technically less than three years because 2020 is not done yet. And then we're also going to broaden it. So we're not just looking at two player only games, but games that are any number of players, but play great with only two. Now, finally, this list isn't in any particular order. When we get to the end of the list, we'll feature a few honorable mentions, mm -hmm. games that we felt needed to be mentioned, but didn't make our list for one reason or another. All right, the first one is a game I had actually originally planned to review tonight, but I just didn't have time to get it written. And that is the Pathfinder Adventure Card game, specifically the 2019 core set, which is the latest iteration of these Pathfinder Adventure games. Now, despite being designed for up to four players, even more if you have the expansions, this game is thought by most people to be best as either a single player or a two player game experience. It's fantastic solo. It's great too. Once you add more players, there's just a little bit too much downtime and it's a little harder to coordinate your efforts. Now, Deanna and I, my wife and I have been playing through the original adventure path. And that's the Pathfinder term for a, a series of link stories. And this one's called the dragon's demand. And we've been really enjoying it. Like there's a real aspect of that. You can tell it's a Paizo game. Paizo became famous for writing Dungeons and Dragons adventures and then eventually making their own game with their own setting. And the story in here is fantastic. And I got to admit, there is a learning curve here. Um, this is not a light game. It's not easy to learn. There's a lot of terms. It's a complicated card game. But now that we've made it over that learning curve, we are really loving this game. 
if you're a fan of Dungeons and Dragons style adventures, the whole fighting goblins, leveling up, getting gear, fighting bonds, monsters, and playing out a cohesive storyline, it's worth checking the Pathfinder Adventure card game. All right. And that is the 2019 core set for Pathfinder Adventure card game. All right, next I have the Fox in the Forest duet. What I'm going to try to do in this list is we're trying to go for a broad range of different types of games, especially since the uh, the questioner asking is brand new to games and aren't sure even what they like yet. So we're going to try to go all over the map. So we're going from like heavy card game dungeon crawling to a much lighter card game. I grew up playing traditional card games, stuff like Spades, Hearts, Euchre. And when I first heard that Renegade Games with Fox Mind had published a cooperative trick-taking game i'm like how? how how does that work like i was intrigued i'm like i gotta see this i need to know how you can make a co-op trick-taking game because trick-taking in on it's, it's just so competitive like every round you're competing to take tricks that's the whole point and then there's variations on if i want them all or not but what anyway once i got the play the Black forest duet i was blown away i have to thank terry at renegade games for letting me loan her loaning me her copy because i probably would have avoided this one without getting to try it for free now that i played it i recommend this one to everyone this is a great two-player game the only thing though is don't pick this one up if you want it for an intimate date night because a big part of the game is you can't talk to each other while you're playing well you know some relationships might work better that way some might not it's true but that was fox in the forest duet and i specified duet for yes. a reason because up next i do want to talk about also the original fox in the forest and this is for players who prefer the competitive two-player games as opposed to cooperative games where you can play a little bit more take that and you can rib on each other this is the original fox in the forest this is still a, a trick-taking game but a trick-taking game for two players um this is very quick to play takes up almost no room because all you need is the card deck and some scoring tokens uh my wife and i dan i love this game it is it is a fantastic game again i gotta thank terry for lending us a copy but also tech one of our fans uh for picking us up a physical copy after we talked about how much we liked the copy we bored off terry this is one of those games where you got you can you don't want to take all the tricks and that's that's what makes this game work is you want to try to take just enough tricks but not all of them and if you take too many you get penalized for it and that back and forth is fantastic yeah and so that was fox in the forest which is the competitive version where fox in the forest duet is the co-op version correct i thought about spacing these out in the list to make it more clear but i figured actually trying to clear it up right at the beginning is probably yep. better so all right, still sticking with card games. I don't know, I just kind of grouped these together. If you like two-player card games, I suggest checking out Keyforge. This is a very unique concept for a game. It's a two-player dueling card game. So think of games like Pokemon, Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, actually, this is actually the same designer as Magic the Gathering and Pokemon, Richard Garfield. Um, the thing with Keyforge, the neat thing that the, the is that every single deck ever produced for the game and ever will be produced is 100% unique. And you only ever need one deck to play and it's non-collectible. So you literally, I could go to the store right now and buy a deck or, and Sean could go to the store and buy a deck. We sit down and just start playing with those two, de two decks out of the box, go. Now, gameplay is solid and very enjoyable. I really do like the gameplay in Keyforge, but what I like even more is the fact there's no boosters, there's no deck building, there's no meta, there's no trying to follow the trends. It's just go pick up Keyforge deck, you pick up Keyforge deck, let's play. I love that aspect of this game. Yeah, and now for the same reason, that might not be for everybody. There are mm -hmm. people out there who are the real Magic fans who love that deck building experience. And that's not deck building during the game, but that preparing your deck to do battle against someone yeah. else. And that, that's, that's what a, I usually like to call deck construction. Deck construction. You, so, you construct your deck right. before playing. So it's it's that's a huge thing for a lot of people. And this game eliminates that for better or for worse. Uh, I think I tend to agree where, you know, the idea, one of the, the great things about early magic tournaments back before it got kind of blown out was you could just go to a store, pick up a starter box and start playing and you'd have a random mm -hmm. assortment of cards to go. And unfortunately, the way they, the game has gone, that's not a, a thing anymore. But it was a great idea. And what Keyforge has done has brought us back to that, where you just mm -hmm. pick up a box, sit down, start to play. That was Keyforge. 
And to be honest, I don't have it on this list, but Magic the Gathering does have a new 2021 core set that was just released just last month. So I, it's a longer game. I figured everyone known about that one. I'm pretty sure anyone that's interested in Magic can go check that out if they want. Um, I don't know what's going on for Friday Night Magic and organized play with that with right now, if that's going on online or whatever. But for Keyforge being something brand new, so we tossed that one on here. Up next, I wanted something a little lighter. So, and no, no more cards. So we're going to throw the cards out. Um, I wanted a game that is a great gateway game to people who grew up playing traditional board games. And one of those is Kami. This takes the mechanics of checkers or drafts. This is the original game converted into an area control Euro-ish game. We got this one for the kids thinking, oh, they'll like it. It'll be fun. And I was blown away the depth of this game, the amount of strategy and tactics in it. Like this is one that I think should be on the shelf with the adult games, not with the kids games. I think by selling King Me to kids, they're like, oh, it's just checkers. And it's so not. This is a fantastic game that belongs in with the, the bigger, heavier strategy board games, in my opinion. If you are at all, like if you've ever had fond memories of playing checkers, pick this up because it takes checkers to that next level. Excellent. And that is King Me. All right, we're going to we're going to jump to a whole other side of the hobby, a different type of tabletop gaming, and that is tabletop wargaming with Star Wars X-Wing 2nd Edition. Now, I got to admit, I'm not happy that Fantasy Flight rebooted X-Wing and that all of my ships and I have a lot are useless without buying an upgrade kit. I can't deny the popularity of the 2nd Edition of X-Wing and the f- changes that came with it that people seem to love. The people who continued to play X-Wing when it swapped over and the new people getting into the hobby seem to really like the updates they made with 2nd Edition. So fair enough. X-Wing always has been, and I think always will be, a fantastic dogfighting miniature game that honestly has some of the best-looking miniatures you'll see in the industry with the added bonus that they all come pre-painted. Like, these are completed, done, ready to use right out of the box miniatures. If you're new, like our people asking the questions tonight and thinking about getting an X-Wing, now's the perfect time because you don't have to worry about converting your old stuff. You can just start with the second edition. Now, how how expensive is Star, Way, Star Wars X-Wing to get into? I mean, one ship each isn't going to be much, but no one's going to stop at one ship each. <laughs> no, I'd, I, you know what? I'd, I'd follow tabletop deals on Twitter and you can usually find good deals. Individual ships are about 15 bucks US. Uh, the starter set tends to go on sale and you can get it for about 30 bucks. And to be honest, the starter set is a great way to build a fleet cheap because it comes with two TIE fighters and one X-Wing. So if you buy two starter sets, that's actually enough for a two-player game, full, whatever the point value is, 100 points, 300 points. I can't remember right now because TIE fighters are cheaper. So two TIE fighters versus four X-Wings is about a balanced game. And then just pick up the ships that look cool is the way I play it. Now, here in Windsor at Tabletop Renaissance, they are huge about X-Wing. Like, they have tournaments and everything, and they're all about the meta and what ships combine with which. And that if you dive into it that big, it's going to be expensive. But it's like that for any of these miniature games, right? Same thing with Warhammer. It's you and I play My Orcs versus your Dark Elves, and we just buy the stuff that looks cool. That is a completely different game than you bring your army around different parts of North America to compete in tournaments, try to win a Golden Geek Award or whatever, a Golden right. Demon Award. So I think you can get in, like, it's not cheap. What I would suggest with x playing is split, like get two people, you each buy a starter sit and then swap, like someone play Imperial, someone play Rebels, and then pick up other ships as time goes on. Now, what they have done in the new edition is there are way more than just the two factions now, or there's the scum and villainy. Plus they've also done like the Clone Wars stuff now, like there's more to it. I personally haven't kept up with second edition, so I couldn't tell you exactly what they've done with the game, but they have made it more. So there's more factions available now. Interesting. Well, you know, if you've got a, if you, if you want it, the investment and you like that and you've got the tabletop space, especially if you're looking to play at home, you're going to need a, is it a four three by, by four? three, three by three. three. Oh, that's not bad actually. Yeah. So, all right. Well, that is Star Wars X-Wing second edition. All right. Sticking with the war games. The one thing you don't get with X-Wing is the whole hobby side of miniature wargaming. So if you are interested in the whole hobby aspects, uh, cutting your miniatures out and assembling them and gluing them and prepping them and priming them and painting them and creating scenery and all that stuff, I am going to point you towards Warhammer Underworlds. 
This is a furniture miniature game from Games Workshop where you're expected to assemble and paint your own units. Though, to be honest, you don't have to paint them. Like, you can play without. Uh, the models actually in the core sets are snapped together, so you don't even have the glue. But there is still that assembly required. This is a card-driven skirmish game that features amazing-looking miniatures. That's the one thing Games Workshop always has been known for, probably always will be known for. And what I like about this one is it's really neat gameplay. Sean's played this one with me. And what's really cool about this one is your objectives are card based and they change every game. So it's never, it's not always like, sometimes it's kill all the enemies. Other times it's have so many of your guys on the opponent side of the board. Another time it's control objectives. And the fact that that's randomized for each faction, every game. So what your opponent's trying to do and what you're doing will be different really ups the replayability and variability of Underworlds. Now, Sean and I played the original Shadespire version. There are new ones. Two sets came out in 2020 even. Dreadfane appears to be the newest one. What they seem to be doing with each of these editions is new boards, new rules, but it's mainly two new armies that come with them. So it's a way to get started. So what I would recommend is pick up the two armies that look the coolest to you and go with that set, and then you can always move on from there. Yeah, the really nice thing about this is, is that not knowing what your opponent is going to be doing, right? You've part, you, you're not only trying to achieve your own objectives, you're trying to discern what it is your opponent is trying to do mm -hmm. uh, from a you know, reasonably large set of possibilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like that aspect. And the card driven was really well done. Like that, it was a, there's still dice, it's still Warhammer-ish, yeah. there's still yeah. saving throws and all that, but it, it it's definitely not the, the huge battle game that it used to be. And the other thing too with that is if you do find you enjoy that, you can always take the step to the next level of the full miniature games. Oh, well, that's going to get expensive. Yes, <laughs> but for the it cheaper is. version, it's Warhammer Underworlds. All right, swapping over to more of a party style games or lighter fare, I am going to recommend Codenames Duet. Now, despite what they say on Amazon a few places, this is not actually a two-player game. It is a team-based version of Codenames, but it is designed specifically to be played with either two players or two teams. And this is another one that I got to say, like Fox in the Forest, I had doubts about because I'm like, Codenames works. Like, Codenames is a really solid big group party game. How the heck do you get that to work for two teams or two players? And man, it works so well. Like, I am blown away. This is a game that I can't believe Deanna and I keep breaking out. Like, I just didn't think it would have the longevity it has. This is now one of our favorite games for date night. Later in the night, once we had a few drinks, it tends to get even more fun. Uh, the whole thing here is it's a word game, and you are trying to get the other players to pick the right words that are on the board based on a two-sided clue card, where there's a different pattern for you as there is from for your partner. So, yeah, that is Codenames Duet. All right, moving over to an abstract strategy game. I am a huge fan of two-player abstract strategy games. If you check any of our other two-player content, you're going to see games like the Duke and Onitama on there. Those are classics, though. Here is a modern one that has just come out in 2019, and it's called Shobu. This is one of those games where you could basically make it yourself at home. It's moving white and black stones on wooden boards that are just grids. And the goal is to push the opponent's stone off the board. The trick to this game is every turn you must make two moves with two different stones. The first move is passive. All you are doing is moving a piece any direction. I think it's up to two spots, including diagonally. And that, you just move the piece, nothing happens. The second, though has to be an identical move with a different piece. So you have to make the exact same move. This one is aggressive, and this is the one that can push opponent's pieces and what you use to try to knock the opponents off. This is one of those whole chest-like abstract, uh, you know, easy to learn, difficult to master, everything people love about chess without having to memorize all the moves or having the complexity level much simpler. Really neat game. Sounds dead simple until you start playing going, oh, but I can't make that passive move to attack and I want to attack with that guy. Oh, and if I move this stone, he's going to that stone and trying to plan three moves ahead. It's one of those style of abstract games. Excellent. And that is Shobu. All right. I'm just going to jump back to Codenames Duet for a second based on a comment in our chat room right now. That is a cooperative game. Codenames Duet is cooperative. You are working together to try to guess the clues together. It is not a competitive game, which is a big change from the original Codenames, which was a team game where your team is competing, competing with the other team. All right, on to the next one. Here's another lighter game. 
that is small and portable, something I love for playing at things like coffee shops. And that is Ticket to Ride New York. I think at this point, pretty much everyone in the world's heard of Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride in the recent years have been releasing with the City series, a number of smaller games. Ticket to Ride New York is one of them. I just as much would recommend New York, uh, sorry, London. And now just coming up is Amsterdam. These are smaller four versions of Ticket to Ride. There are smaller that I think are awesome for playing like a pub, a coffee shop, somewhere on a small table at your kitchen table, perhaps. And they play really quickly, like in 15 minutes. The only thing you got to watch for those, if you do a coffee shop or something, there are lots of little tiny taxis in this particular version or double decker, um, double decker buses in the London version. Just be careful. You don't lose any pieces. I love these games for some reason, because like you get that ticket to ride experience without it taking two hours. Like they play in under 15 minutes. And these are particularly good to player. They are extremely cutthroat because you only have each other and it's all about trying to cut the other player off. And the game just gets better once the players get to know the different route cards so that they can judge what they think the opponents are going for. Yeah, no, I have to say, we we opened this box from plastic wrapped mm. in and, and finished a game in, I think, 25 minutes. Uh, yep. You know, rules and all, it's great. And I don't enjoy Ticket to Ride. If you if you say, hey, let's sit down and play Ticket to Ride, I'll probably hem and haw and, and see if there's another game group going <laughs> at the time. But this, again, because it's just light and fast, um, it, it's got all the fun of Ticket to Ride without the slog of Ticket mm -hmm. to Ride. Totally agree. And so that is Ticket to Ride New York or London. Or Amsterdam, or I guess. Amsterdam. I have no doubt those ones, so who knows? All right, next, I want to strongly recommend for, for a unique gaming experience, the Exit series of games, uh, particularly the Haunted Roller Coaster. But really, any of them could be on the list. But I want to call out Haunted Roller Coaster first uh, because the theme fits the season, right? Haunted Roller Coasters, it's October 14th right now. Uh, they'll still be before uh, Halloween by the time you get to listen to this episode when it comes out or it's on YouTube. So I got to recommend this one for theme plus this so far is the best gateway to the exit series of games I've played. This is one of the easier ones. It's only a two difficulty. Oddly, two is the easiest. Two out of five. And this does such a great job at highlighting what the exit games can do and presenting a wide range of different puzzle types and ways to make you think. If you've never done one of these escape room in the boxes, I highly recommend the haunted roller coaster as as a place to start to see if you like those kinds of games so again like we're trying to recommend a wide variety of different game types here if you think you want to try a brain burning puzzle that you and your partner can sit down and work on together i strongly recommend the exit series absolutely now just remember as we have mentioned in previous uh reviews and topics the newer exit games are stronger. They've been mm -hmm. learning as they go. And one of the reasons we recommend Haunted Roller Coaster as a starter is not only is it on the easier scale, so you're 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 ramping into the system, but it's also one of their newer yes. escape rooms, and they've learned from prior game prior releases. So that is Exit the Haunted Roller Coaster. All right, my final two-player game recommendation for the night is going to be Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. If you want a two-player dungeon crawling experience and like some weight and difficulty with your games, I strongly recommend Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. No, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion, not Gloomhaven. Now, full Gloomhaven is great two players. I'm not trying to deny that, but I don't recommend anyone new to the hobby spend the kind of money Gloomhaven costs until you play through Jaws of the Lion. Because for one, the Gloomhaven system is not easy. And Jaws of the Lion does a great job of onboarding new players. And to be honest, if it wasn't for that tutorial system that's in there, the first five missions, I wouldn't even recommend this to a couple that's new to the hobby because there is now Gloomhaven, before Gloomhaven exists, that step-by-step -step five scenario slowly teach you a bit of the rules. I now feel comfortable recommending this even to new gamers. Now, note, this is not what I call a gateway game. Yes, I'm recommending it as a gateway, but like you're taking a big step here. This is not a light dungeon crawl romp where you're going to run around, roll some dice and kill a bunch of monsters. That's not what Gloomhaven is. This is a, a puzzle 
a, a multiplayer cooperative dungeon crawling resource management puzzle where you are trying to figure out the optimum move every time to defeat the enemies. If that sounds like fun to you, this is a fantastic box with a ton of content for the price. Absolutely. That, and this is, you know, absolutely the way to start. Don't go out and buy Gloomhaven without no. buying Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. All right, I do have three honorable mentions. I'm not going to get into as much detail on these ones. I just want to fire them off quickly. Number one is Undaunted Normandy. This is a two-player only card-driven war game that is getting a ton of positive buzz online. Like the amount of people whose opinions I listen to, that I respect, podcasts I listen to regularly for their opinions and games is going nuts about Undaunted Normandy. The only reason it's not on the list is I haven't had a chance to try this game. Uh, there is now Undaunted um, Africa or North Africa, the second part of this, which is a standalone expansion. People seem to be really loving this. Sounds like it's well worth picking up. I just haven't played it myself. All right. And that was Undaunted Normandy. All right, next, if you want to talk about positive buzz in two-player games, the hotness right now is Watergate from Capstone Games. This has been winning all kinds of 2019 two-player game awards, has even been nominated for some 2019 Game of the Year awards. Find out why this wasn't on my list later during our review segment. All right, and that was Watergate. Finally, I want to finish off with Command and Colors Medieval. If you are looking for historic wargaming, hex encounter style, like when you think of a war game and you think of um, chits on a board, I wanted to throw in a game on the list that fit that type of gaming. And I think the Command and Color series overall is the best in two player wargaming. I love every Command and Color game. Now, the medieval version is the most recent that just came out last year, 2019. So, hotness, this is the up reason again it's not on the list i haven't actually played the medieval version the one i love the most so far is is ancients but it's great and later this year possibly it might even be early 2021 they're putting out a feudal japan edition that oh my god does that look good i am really hyped about the japan one but overall command and colors any of the games are fantastic these are great war games that are very accessible to new gamers as well as being deep enough to keep old Ron Yard's happy as well. Absolutely. And that is Command and Colors Medieval. Now, I've actually got a couple of uh, ones I want to mention in here. Okay. Uh, first off, and now this isn't on our list because you can't actually get it yet if you haven't already ordered it. But I think uh, if you can hold off until probably spring of next year, keep an eye out for Garinto from Grand Gamers Guild. Mm. Uh a great two-player game, but also great all the way up to four. Um, fantastic game that we've recovered here. Uh, it is out of pre-order at the moment, but uh, they should be reopening that up probably oh. in the Christmas season. Um, I... We know we've seen the tiles, so uh, they're they're well under uh, well on on their way for production on that. Yeah, I am really looking forward to getting our copy of Garento. That game looks fantastic. We we did the preview. We played a preview edition of the game, and it was one of the best abstract games I've ever played. Yeah. Really looking forward to that one from Grand Gamers Guild. And component, that was and Garento. Component, yeah, and the component quality on it is just right up there now, now that we've seen them. Uh, and the other one would be Unmatched, which mm. I haven't played yet, but I have watched several games played and you know what? People love this game. It's a great game and it's, it's very flexible because you are playing various different figures against each other in unmatched combat between people like Bruce Lee and Frankenstein. Yep. Yeah, I can agree. I, I, you know what? This was almost in the honorable mentions. I, I almost put it on there, but like you, I haven't played it. I haven't actually sat down and watched someone play. It's actually a remake of the original Star Wars Epic Duels game. Uh, from Restoration Games, um, something in Fog is like everyone was really upset, or, uh, really excited about Cobble and Fog. I think it's the latest expansion. I don't even know who that is. Um, it, it looks neat. I know friends of ours, um, Kator, Cat, and Tori are fans of Unmatched. I've heard really good things. Yeah, that definitely definitely belongs to the honorable mentions. Again, haven't played it myself, so I couldn't tell you on that one. Yeah, no, I definitely honorable mentions. And then I suppose the last one I would throw in would be Funkoverse. Yeah. 
Fair enough. So the, they, for people who haven't uh, checked out our review, the Funkoverse series of games, the most recent is Game of Thrones and Jurassic Park, I think are the latest ones. These are two-player skirmish miniature war games for kids in a way, like really gateway level, but still being solid miniature games. Like they did, they're the heavy war gamers sat down and went, let's make an accessible war game that kids and fans of Pops will enjoy and managed to put out a fantastic light war game. And it's, it's really interesting to see because people don't realize it's a war game, but like anyone who's played Warhammer Underworlds, for example, is like, oh, I see some war game roots here. There are a ton of these out. Uh, there's some great Prime Day deals on the Kool-Aid Man and the uh, the Game of Thrones. So you can have the, uh, I don't know, I don't know Game of Thrones characters. I was going to say, <laughs> uh, you could have the, whatever that blue thing is, fight the Kool-Aid Man. I don't know what the blue thing is. Probably a White Walker. That's the word. I was I'm like, if I could think of it, it's, it's, it's the, like the king that goes on the throne. I don't know. And, so yeah, uh, the Funkoverse games definitely uh they can play more than two, but they're they're solid two player and they, the two player sets are standalone. So if you go buy just the two character ones, that is a full game, yep. or they can be used to combine. Uh, and and the despite the fact oh. that legally they can't say the games can be played together because that would mash licenses, they are all intercompatible. So yes, you can have Dorothy from the Golden Girls go up against the Joker. Uh, and Unmatched Coblin Fog is basically a Penny Dreadful version with uh, Watson and Holmes, Dracula okay. and the Sisters, and Jekyll and Hyde. Oh, there you go. See, that makes more sense. I didn't recognize that term, Coblin Fog, to, yeah, so to for the, what that would mean. The, but yeah, the, the people British, were going nuts for that. The British, uh, British version, I guess, is that. Fair enough. All righty. So let's take a dip into our lobby and see. Well, if anyone else has any suggestions they have for newer last three years two player games, yeah, our, our chat room's been busy talking about stuff, but there hasn't really been a lot of talk about the game. Yeah, so, we've had some the Duke did yeah. come up multiple times. A few people are talking yeah. about the Duke, and I think it's just they're in shock because we had a two player episode where we didn't talk about the Duke. But unfortunately, AE you know, Catalyst Game Labs, owner of the Duke, um, haven't really been putting anything out for it lately. So, I would love to see a, a new edition or an updated version of the Duke out there. The Duke is one of my favorite two player games of all time. Although Probably have, my favorite. Although I have to say the current time. edition is a very solid purchase. Yeah. Uh, I assume it's still. Out yeah. The and, Duke Lord's legacy Duke, yeah. is the current printing of the Duke. Uh, there are still expansions. I don't have for that because I find the base games enough. I don't, yeah, I don't I, like I have the extra, but I don't feel I need them. Yep. Uh, Mountain Papa did know Polar Station in particular for the exit games was rather difficult. So you might not want to grab that one right away if it's your first one. Um, next week, we are hoping to review one of the exit games. I uh, don't know where I put it. <laughs> oh, it's behind us because it's in the thing. I can't remember. Oh, wow. The Catacombs of something. Okay. It's a uh, multiple part exit game. I'm hoping to get that one reviewed. All right. Uh, yeah, no other. Uh, I, yeah. I think we have a, a quieter than usual. Uh, Catacombs of lobby. Horror is the name of that. Catacombs of Horror. Thank you, Deanna. All right. Well, let's wrap. So, that as up. always, if you have any gaming or gaming night related questions, please send them to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. <laughs> 